So I'm here with uh, a new friend of mine, Mo Mitra from uh, the uh, biology program. And uh, Mo, I wanted, to, I wanted you to talk a little bit about this hobby that you've developed over the past year or so. Okay, yeah, I actually go for walks in the green belt, Carrollton green belt, and also in the campus. So I have started this since last three months, pretty regularly every day. Um, and I think, you know, I'm a, basically a plant biologist. So um, I love plants and blooms and anything green. <laughs> um, so I've been observing lots of, I mean, blooms, different colors of leaves, shapes of petals of flowers, intricate designs, patterns. I used to just watch, you know, when I'm walking. But then suddenly one day I thought, why not take pictures, you know? Mm -hmm. um, just as a hobby. I mean, I was not planning to do anything serious with it. And slowly, I think I got into it. And it is now a hobby that I really enjoy. And my walks are meditative. And I think this photography capturing the, you know, this natural beauty around me has, you know, merged into that. So I cannot separate the two right now, like my walk which was my meditative walk because I used to shut out the world. Yeah. I don't even recognize people when I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so into it in Austin nature. And Carrollton has beautiful, you know, the nature. You cannot find this kind of beauty, I think, especially the springtime. You know. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it seems to me that, you know, I, I think maybe a lot of people would say, oh, I, you know, I love to take photos of beautiful flowers, too. So, you know, what is it like or what do you think your background in science and botany, um, how does that affect or condition the way you see these flowers and how you're taking your photos? If you ask me as a scientist or a plant biologist, the way I'm looking at my objects that I'm capturing yeah, I'm trying to zoom in to get into the details of the flower architecture mm -hmm. so that I can upload it on iNaturalist, which is one of my favorite app. And also, just four days back, I joined a group, plant identification group on Facebook, which is global. It's not like Georgia flowers or particular state flowers. Sure. And you cannot chit chat there. The group will kick you out if you do like plant selling and you know, <laughs> kinds of gardening tips. Those are not allowed. They right. monitor. You just have to give the geographical location and just ID. And they're very good actually, better than I naturalist sometimes. They're very fast in ID plants. So I'm getting a double confirmation. I first upload my pictures on I naturalist. Then I get the get it reconfirmed via the plant identification group which is much more accurate i'm noticing actually last four days so um so yeah going back to your question the scientist as a scientist i'm observing the details for taxonomic identification right so mm -hmm. that somebody it's easier for somebody to id it sure but there's a way to take pictures and that's where the art comes in you know yeah, so yeah. um I also keep that, I mean, I like it. I like beauty to like, so that a tiny wildflower has tremendous amount of beauties. People don't notice these, they tread on it, you know, these wildflowers. So I want to show their beauty. They're as beautiful as the showy magnolias and the cherry blossoms. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of a friend. I don't know if you know Perry Kirk. He, he teaches in the art department and uh, we actually have uh, I actually have some of his photos on my wall and he does exactly what you have. He, he even used the same oh, term, really? taxonomy. Him, taxonomies of wildflowers and strawberries yeah. and they're just gorgeous. Um, oh, and so, okay. so, so he's coming at it from an artistic point of view, you know, sort of really uh, engaging with the object and trying to find the right uh, photographic evidence of it. And you're coming at it from a scientific point of view and you're meeting in the middle in this sort of area of beauty. Mm -hmm. I wonder though, like, is it all beauty that you're capturing or, you know, is your own work as a plant biologist sort of coming into this too? Um, not really. I really, I want to, you know, take the picture in such a way best portrays, like the, how the light is falling sure. on the petals. Like if you see one of the picture in my folder, you know, there's a common uh, viola, like the violet. Mm -hmm. the whatever you say. 
after a, you know i took that picture after a rain shower i mean after a shower so you'll see the raindrops on the petals and i labeled this as rain kissed violet yeah. you know uh, so there is one picture so i like to catch that is instantaneous it's not planned like as i observe suddenly i think oh this would be nice angle you know to capture it let me right and you're you're probably thinking about you know as a photographer we'll think about light right like you know what are the yeah, best times of day yeah. yeah and uh like today you know the rhododendron that i captured it's beautiful yesterday afternoon like around 2 p.m i captured it the color because of the bright sunlight yesterday it was really warm and the sun was really strong it had a little bit more yellowish tinge yeah. i mean my camera caught it like that but today morning around 9 a.m i captured it again because somebody in the plant identification group wanted to see us close up <laughs> so i went to capture it uh, so that they can better they can be sure about the identification and i noticed it's a little bit more pinkish now so the sunlight sure. the time of the day you're capturing does have some effect on the shades most uh, definitely I most you know, it, today. yeah <laughs> It, I don't know, it, it kind of, uh, as we were talking about it earlier, I was thinking, well, this is sort of exactly what people like Audubon were doing and, and, and Darwin. I mean, the, the idea that, that scientists have to, at a certain point, had to have a kind of artistic background, right, in order to capture and, and record and archive what they were finding. So in many ways, you're just participating in a long history of the kind of confluence of art and science, don't you think? Yeah, I never really re like analytically looked at it like that, since you're saying it, maybe it is that. Um, so I also, I don't have much time. I just upload picture and ID and share it with my friends. But in iNaturalist, you can form your group. If you're interested in a specific plant, you can have a community just based on that plant and you can do a research project, you know. Uh, with the geographical location. You can write your journal also. What did you do that day? I should start doing that. I saw yeah. that there's a journal option. You can say well, see, what did you do over the Easter weekend, you know, you did uh, <laughs> take out you the can, yeah, So you ahead. can come, so listen, you can come take a photography class with uh, Perry Kirk or Mark Schoon, and then you can come take a writing class with me. And we'll <laughs> do all three together. We'll bring the sciences and writing and visual art all cool. together. So what do you teach actually, Chad? I don't know much. Creative so. writing, creative writing, so. Oh, but, okay. But this is a, Mo, this has been fantastic. Uh, I sure hope that you continue with your project and we're gonna show, you know, lots of slides of your of your work and uh, best of luck with this project. Right, right, and talk to your friend. What's his name you said? Perry Kirk. Perry Kirk, okay, I'm gonna look him up actually. Do it. Yeah, thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. <laughs>